Hello everyone. We'll talk about evacuation plans. Evacuation plans of life during disasters. That is what we will be talking in today's videos. So, what is an emergency situation? You know, we are looking at uh, unforeseen emergencies, probably workforce emergencies, um, which threatens your employees, which threatens your customer, which threatens the public disrupts or shutdowns the operation completely, causes physical or environmental damages drastically. And that is what we are looking at emergency situation, emergency evacuation, the evacuation plan as the case might be. So what do we do in terms of reporting safety, losses and training procedures as the case might be? This is emergency and this is how we are going to evacuate life. So emergencies will occur. The effect of emergencies must be controlled on a, by means of a proper action plan absolutely step-by-step -step action plan which has been deliberated which has been discussed and probably there was a drill also about it so emergency will occur and the effect needs to be controlled with a proper emergency action plan it is a purpose to facilitate and organize employer and employee actions during the workplace emergency this is most important the mock drill that was there probably this is reality and how you have to enact those mock drills in reality we need to pinpoint there should be evacuation plan there should be exit uh route chart given mentioned stuck on the wall for ev for the ease of everyone to understand so element of action plan the emergency action plan procedures for reporting emergencies whom to report first in first out is it the top boss you need to go around it is it somebody in the disaster team as the case might be is it the security that we are looking at into it Evacu evacuation procedures and emergency escape routes assignment these are these are the pathways that they should be earmarked and properly displayed. Remember in a high rise building during emergency, it is advised not to use elevators. It is advised not to use lifts. You should always use the staircase to make an exit route. So contact for the information then and there. Every information that needs to be there should be pasted at deliberately pasted at viable, uh, viable places. L let's say what kind of contact information in cases of emergency, who in the office needs to be touched? Who in the administration needs to be informed? What about the fire department phone number? What about the medical phone numbers? That should be kept in handy. Procedures for employees who remain after, uh, after the alarm to perform critical duties as the case might be. Procedures to account for employees after evacuation has been completed. You need to na name tag, roll call, frequently call the, call out the numbers of employees as on when on basis during the office hours or during the emergencies post the emergencies or every interval of three or three hours what is happening you should ensure that everybody is accounted for covers designated action employers and employees must ensure that employee customer and public safety are from the emergencies there should be things that should be in places Elements of evacuation, condition of evacuation of shelter in places. Clear chain of command is very important. This is of vital importance. Specific evacuation procedures, including routes and ex exits, a system for accounting for people after evacuation, designation of employees that will perform critical duties during emergencies, during evacuation, during any disaster that might strike. You need to keep this thing open the concept open also with uh, the people with special abilities or should i say disabilities as the case might be now what are we looking out here this is what we need to understand every now and then and that is what we will be talking absolutely no doubt about it that is what we should be looking at it So emergency evacuation plan, one, the condition of evacuation, earthquakes, explosions, fires, floods, hurricane, tornadoes, toxic material release, radiological, biological accidents, civil disturbances, workplace violence may require evacuation opportunities. These are the things where emergency evacuation is a must and that is what one needs to take into consideration. 
I again reiterate the condition required for evacuation. That is fires, explosion, floods, earthquake, tornadoes, tsunamis, hurricanes, toxic material release, biological, radiological, civil disturbances, workplace violences, and so on, as the case might be. The other conditions for sheltering places select an interior room or a rooms within the facility, one with no prob probably few windows or no windows if possible and take refuge there local authorities might issue shelter in place uh, advice via radio via television keep a public uh, communication system available so that you should be able to understand what the governments are doing what interventions have been taking places by the government per se the chain of command, the coordinator is responsible for understanding the situation and making it clear among the people present in the vicinity whether the emergency exists require activations of emergency procedure. Supervising and overseeing the emergency procedures altogether as on when on basis, notifying and coordinating the emergency services, directing the shutdown of utilities of plant operation that is most important during the process. Then comes the specific evacuation procedures, routes and exits. Create maps for flow diagram. Remember, the exit map, map should be always be stuck on the walls. It should be clearly and amply visible for everybody. Uh, people who are not even lifted, appropriate signage use should be utilized. People who are with special abilities or should I say bluntly disabilities, there should be a separate exit plan for them. You need to understand where the exits are located, where was the assembly points, what equipments may be needed in an emergency, take it with them, be with it. So I'm just giving a pictorial representations of an exit plan as the case might be. What are we looking? We have got two exits that come surrounded. Uh, you look, this is a person for with disabilities or special abilities if we, if we say so and how it come across it. So we can designate it, absolutely. We can designate the things. You you look, uh, if we have this exit plans for the, uh, people with physical disabilities here and here, then the, the area that has been marked for this particular exit is in a different color. For this area, it has been marked with different colors. For this particular exit or the entry plan was for a different color. Actually, this is how a building would be looking out here. Remember, this is a site for the customers to enter. For your uh, employees, this might be the entry. For the vendors, this might be the entry. Either of them can be the entry, but this is how a, a proper layout of an, any commercial establishment would have been done. So that is what we need to understand, and that is how it should be accounted for. Accounting for individuals is established the assembly area, designated assembly area, everybody should aware in cases of emergency where to run to. If not whom to run to, at least where to run to. Process to account for employees and non-employees, such as suppliers and customers. Procedures for further evacuation in cases of incidents expand. If the magnitude of the disaster is increasing and probably is threatening, you need to understand what should be the evacuation plan. It's not no longer the case of assembly area. It's no longer the cases that being in the assembly, assembly area will help you to elevate the disaster. If the magnitude is increasing, you need to have a proper evacuation plan for, for that. So designations for employees, if any, that will remain after the evacuation alarm to perform critical duties and operation before evacuation. Yes. Uh, the key employees has to stay back and ensure that there is no one has been left behind. The key employees has to do certain other duties in terms of documentation, in terms of probably finances, finance related things or important properties, valuable properties. Uh, those SOP, the standing operating procedures, proud practices, if I may say so, needs to be adhered before the employee should exit the premises. So designation and the duties, we have a team leader, we have building coordinator, we have critical operation person, the evacuation wardens, the flow monitor, the stairwell monitor, the elevator monitor, the disabilities aid, the people with uh, who are handicapped as in basis. You need to have such people. These people might be working uh, on a day job every time, but they have 
a different role during disaster some of them assume the role of a team leader some of them assume the role of a building coordinator then there are other people who are critical operation person and so on and so forth but that needs to be understood that needs to be communicated established procedures for assisting visitors and employees to evacuate particularly those with disabilities those who are not conversant in english as a language you need to understand the emergency evacuation plan here very thoroughly emergency uh, considers everybody in the plan include everyone in the plan communicate with everyone in the plan the, everybody should know if he or she is working in that particular premises for more than 2 years should have at least involved himself or herself in one of those mock drills so yes everyone should be in, in the plan be it the employees be it the volunteers be it the visitors the customer the supplier the students the clients the patients the hearing impaired people non ambulatory disabled ambulatory disabled non english speaking vision impaired medical condition as as in respiratory problem impairment cognitive or psychiatric impairment and others you name it and we have it everybody should be inclusive in the evacuation plan as as the case might be because in emergencies things are not normal so area of rescue assistance is or should i say refuge area of refuge or shelter in places as the case might be believe me or not the area why do we have this shelter in places or rescue assistant you will see there will be an amalgamation of people the mere fact that a one human being is looking at another human being gives a sort of comfort to to themselves as in they are in a better places or together that is what we should be looking forward that is what we are uh, actually experiencing being in the vicinity of another individual will allow a sense of trust a sense of self confidence creeping in so an area which has direct access to exit where people who are unable to use stairs may remain temporary in safety to await for further instruction further assistance during emergency assistance <clears throat> now what are we talking in terms of uh, the rescue assistance requirement as in the location the constraint the size the stairway the weight the two way communication the identification now believe me or not the area of rescue assistance will help to elevate such things if there is size is too small for a large number of people to accommodate you need to build certain things you need to keep it in mind as what should be your rescue area what is the location is it accessible by everyone even the physically disabled even the uh, uh, vision impaired people now how do you go around it is a possibility of a two way communication uh, mode been available in that area yes or no identification thereof remember uh, the access to disability areas uh, accessibility guidelines for building and facilities needs to be maintained every now and then so general training for people what do we do we have individual roles we have their responsibility we need to understand about the threats the hazard the protective actions notification and warning communication procedures means for locating a family member in an emergency as on when on basis if there's a pa system pa system is public address system as the uh, as the case might be so people are aware even if i cannot have my friend my family within my vicinity but if i know my family is safe or the public address system if i can let my family know that i am safe it gives a sense of uh, confidence it gives a sense of relief and a mental peace to an individual that's what the general training for people should be all about it they should know about what are the threats they should know what are the hazards they should know what are the warning signs what to do and how to do the communication becomes important the individual roles are important So emergency response procedures. How do we go across with it? Evacuation shelters, accountability procedures, location, and the use of common emergency equipment. Very pertinent, absolutely pertinent. And the emergency shutdown, as the case might be. So training. When to train employees? Develop an initial plan. Always have an existing plan for evacuation in the building phase state. Number one. Number two. Educate. every employees about the evacuation plan the moment you hire a new a new employees during induction you need to know them in fact apart from induction there should be a, 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 a half a day or a one day annual training every a, a, once in a year for such kind of uneventful or should a such kind of uh, hazardous day that might creep in suddenly 
is introduction of new equipment and material in case if we are ensuring new kind of uh, materials for example the fire retardants new materials how to use it what to do what are the expiry dates what needs to be check in check in so new equipment material processes workplace that affects evacuation uh, routes change the layout design of the facility if there is a change in layout and facilities from the vendor area to the store keeping area what changes the employee entrance area the customer entrance area revise your updated emergency procedures if any if there are any changes in the phone numbers of the key people during emergency that needs to be informed should be updated if there are key people who have changed on a particular position again need to be notified so hold practice drill as often as possible but once in a year is a mandatory thing because after each drill the management and the employees can gather and evaluate the effectiveness of the call effectiveness of the drill identify the strength probably even identify the weakness so that you can improve upon it so that you can work upon it in include the other department as in the police or the fire if possible so we have to understand for every door it should not be opening only on the one side it has to be op opening both side both the exit and the entry is very important for an emergency evacuation plane with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this video till the end